Hi, this is Carrie Babbitt with Frog Dog Studio, and for this month's Expanding Your Options video, I wanted to show you something that I love to just experiment with in my studio with different art mediums at different times. So I'm going to go through some of the different art mediums that we've had throughout the Frog Dog kits from June to now, and see what happens when we use glossy photo paper to make different prints with. The different art mediums will react differently, but then it dries permanently on the glossy paper and you can use it for layouts, decor, a um, lot of different projects. I even have some of these that I did in some mermaid colors and did a push pin grid in my daughter's room. It's just really fun to do a lot of different things with this. So we're going to experiment with art mediums from the Frog Dog kits and how they react with glossy photo paper. I have a bunch of glossy photo paper that isn't high enough quality for me to want to print my photo that onto. It's the cheaper packs that you can buy in 100 or 50. Um, these ones are cool because they have a kind of a matte on one side and a glossy on the other. And I think they're Kodak. And I, I like to just experiment with how the mediums react with the different textures of paper. So first we'll start with this Liquitex ink that is in the January kit. And it's such a cool, ink that dries permanent but it's so concentrated and it's a great 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 saturated colors so to start i'm just going to spread a few of these on ink drops on here and then press the glossy paper onto it and just press i like to do this a lot when i've got leftovers or when my ink kind of gets everywhere and I've got different colors inside of this area and so then I just like to press the glossy paper onto it and see what happens. So this, just to get started, kind of took some fun texture from that. It's got some gold in there from random other projects which is kind of fun. This one I'm going to let dry for a minute before I add the Prussian blue hue because once it's dry it'll be permanent and so I won't get any mixing. Sometimes I've mixed with this and you get kind of a purple, black, inky um, color in between the red and the blue, but this time I'm gonna let this one dry and then add some more. Another fun art medium to do these gloss prints with are alcohol inks. So that's another fun way you can, with alcohol inks, and these are from the June Frog Dog Kit, I just like to blot them directly onto the glossy paper and they spread in such a cool way leaving a border I just love that look I love how the alcohol ink spread onto the glossy since it wasn't quite level it could spread into an oval on that one but to add more colors we'll see what happens next so oh cool so see, I'm like a little kid in a candy shop with these types of projects. I just love to see how the things react. And you can find such great effects on accident so many times that you can begin incorporating into lots of projects. So I really love how this one's turning out with the halo of lighter blue around and then the border between the blue and the green with the darker border on the green. That is just too cool. So let's go back to our current January kit, see what happens when we add a little more. This time I think I'm just gonna drop it. It will not wick on glossy paper. The Liquitex wicks really, really well in such a cool way on watercolor paper. But on this, it's gonna stay exactly where you put it unless you press the paper on like I did before. So I'm gonna let those go. I think I might even try a matte paper on the top and see what the matte size does on this. It's gonna spread the dots out on that paper and then pull it off here. Yeah, I like that. So on the matte, it gives some great texture. And then on this one, it's I like how it pops the bubbles and leaves kind of a resist there. And then you can just see some really cool things starting to happen on that. So moving on to the next frog dog kit, it was July's Distress Paint. So with this, I like to just 
ink them directly onto the onto the glossy paper. They dry to a chalky finish, but they blend well before. And uh, this is really fun to kind of put the dots on first and then spread them after so they still stay because of how quickly it starts to dry on the glossy paper. But you can kind of spread that out like that and see how the dots are still there. So I'll add some of the cream. Here, to add kind of a little bit of a whitewash look. And then I think, just for fun, what I'm going to try with this is to spray it with a spray ink. Um, this is a Lindy Stamp Gang in Ghostly Gargoyle White. Kind of re-wet that surface and see what happens. It should give it a fun iridescent look. So that would be fun to add more colors to. You could even try to add layer on with some of the other inks and try the alcohol, see how it wicks after ink has been paint, the distress paint has been applied. So it kind of gives a more, a slower wicking and less uniform, but kind of a really cool, more amoeba-like effect. It's actually pretty cool. So if you watch, you can see how differently that wicks than it did the first time in the smooth uniform way on this plain glossy paper without the distress paint on it first. So that's kind of cool. That could be a fun Halloween thing. That could be a fun kind of a seaside barnacle thing. Have fun with that. I think I'm just gonna add several there. A monster thing. <laughs> it's pretty fun or an animal skin print you could do with that kind of an effect in browns or something. That's pretty cool. Okay, moving on to September at Frog Dog. We had the Faber Castell pens, Dilusions spray, neon ink pad. And so those different art, art mediums will be really fun to play with on this. I think these just look really great, kind of the watercolor brush art effect that's popular right now and that will dry so quickly on the glossy paper so that it might be kind of fun to just really freestyle draw a few things there and then maybe spray it with the white this will just give a tone on tone effect with the gloss, but it kind of raises the gloss up a little bit and it's kind of a fun look. If I can get it to spray, I'm almost out. There we go. So the paint sprays are kind of fun on glossy because they will stay raised like that and give kind of a dimensional look when sprayed on glossy paper. So that's kind of fun. I think I'm gonna spray it a little bit more with a little bit of a watery color there. Maybe try to put another one on top and just see what happens since the hearts are already permanent. So um, that gets some of the white off and lets the hearts show through a little bit more. Another fun thing that I love to use on these glossy prints is Magicals, Lindy Stamp Gang Magicals, that have been some of the limited edition kits. So if I just put some there, kind of just spread it around, place that on there, then it will give a really fun um, shimmer to it. So those I think I'll let it react on this particular one. Ooh, that's kind of fun how it's kind of swirling those magical colors, giving some fun movement to that piece, that piece of photo paper. Let's see what happens if we put the other one on top of it again. Oh, making a huge mess. 
<laughs> so the hearts are kind of obliterated, but now I'm kind of liking this kind of fun one, and I think I'll take that and do something with that. Letting the magicals continue to react. Maybe adding some of the blue magicals into Bet and Poppy. And that's really cool to see how they react with the wet spray that's there. Love that. So I think that that could be a really cool effect. I'm just playing around with that, see what happens. So it's just really fun to play around with how each art medium reacts on the glossy paper. I think that's going to be kind of such a fun, creamy watercolor effect that I'm going to play with later. And then my go-to favorite is Lindy's spray for the glossy art press. It's just such a cool effect. And um, you can either spray it on directly and then it will dry quickly on there and then that one will act as a resist for the next color. And so that's kind of a fun thing to play around with. Try another Lindy's here before it's all the way dry and just see what happens. Awesome. Add some white for some iridescence and just spread out those black purplish ones, so I think I'm going to add some more of the gold <clears throat> and just see how that reacts. These are really cool just how they are or they are fun to um, press onto a paper and kind of see what happens that way. You can leave it that way. I'm going to turn it over to blot it off and spread out the droplets a little bit and just see how that goes. It will give such a fun kind of a texture you'll see as it blots in different areas, spreads out the ink, so you get a little bit of haloing and some fun two-tone there, kind of a cool galaxy print. Um, and then the other thing you can do is to just spray the Lindy's directly onto the box and then to see how the paper picks it up afterward by pressing onto it. So it's kind of a, maybe a fun, creepy thing with the black and the green. Oh, very cool. So this picked up the texture from the box, the corrugated cardboard underneath, and how cool is that? So, as you can see, it's just so much fun to play with different effects that you can get with the with glossy paper and the different art mediums. We've got such cool different starting points for different projects. And it's just a lot of fun. It's easy. It's a no-stress creative outlet that you can have when you're just in the mood to create something without worrying about if it messes up or not, and along the way finding some great techniques in the way the inks and the art medium spread, the texturing you can get. And so some of these I'll leave as is, some of them I will play a little bit more with and kind of just see what happens and then they'll appear here and there throughout my different art projects, on my wall, you never know. Um, and finally, here is my art journal page that I created for this month. So. I use the same technique as far as pressing the, the paper. I just put some ink here and then close the book 
onto a different paper and press it up. I love how it kind of created this perfect little butterfly in here, even with the head and the antenna. And so I went with that. That's a fun way to unify an art page where you still want this really messy look, but if you look carefully, this is symmetrical because I closed the book, put ink on one side, closed the book and reopened it. So it adds some symmetry to an otherwise really messy, grungy art page um, that I wanted to be super messy and imperfect on purpose. So I smeared all the ink before it was dry on purpose in an upward motion and then added some crackle and some of the Liquitex ink just to kind of have messy fun um, with the background using this technique where I put the ink on and then close it up. Kind of like those symmetrical art projects you did as a kid where you put paint on one side and then fold it in half and open it back up. That's kind of the fun way that I um, translated this pressing glossy paper onto the art mediums into my art journaling page. So thanks for joining me this month at Frog Dog Studio. Hope you enjoyed it and hopefully you get some artsy, craftsy time um, into your week this week. Thanks for joining us.